Hello guys and welcome back to the next part of my Tarkom Tiger 1 build. In the last part I did all the construction and finished putting the tank together. This part will be all about painting and chipping. I hope you enjoy. The first step is to clean the model. Tap water with a small drop of dish soap should remove most of the residue on the plastic. This will improve the adhesion of the following primer and prevent the accumulated dust from remaining under the paint. The metal surfaces like tow ropes, photo etched parts and the metal barrel should be covered in a thin coat of metal primer. Otherwise there is a risk that the paint could peel off later. The larger the metal surface, the better it is to treat it beforehand. And now it's time to start painting. As for the primer, I will take my usual approach. A nice coat of Vallejo's Makeup Primer Black, thinned with a few drops of Flow Improver. I never had any problems with this primer in the past and it always provides a safe base for subsequent colors. I prefer darker primers over lighter ones in most cases. A dark primer is the perfect base for shadows, because all you have to do later is apply less paint to the areas where you want shadows to be. And for the same reason, I would always prime tracks black as well. The base color will be dark yellow. To be precise, Dunkelgelb Initial from AK Interactive. The color is thinned with AK's 3rd gen acrylic thinner for a better paint flow. The downside of a dark primer is that you may need more coats of the following colors. In my case, I needed three thin coats to achieve full opacity. Especially on a model with such fine details, it is better to apply several thinner layers before accidentally covering details or textures with thick layers of paint. You can always apply another layer of paint if necessary, but you cannot remove any that is too much. For most of my airbrush work, I use a cheap Fengda one from Amazon. I do have a more expensive one from Harder and Steenbeck, but I use this primarily for situations where I am doing finer details or need to try to avoid overspray. The tracks are then painted with Vallejo's Tracks Primer, thinned with Flow Improver. I forgot to prime the spare tracks for the turret black, but I'm too lazy to do that now, so I will just paint them like that. And here we have the tank after the base coat has dried. But I want to add a little bit more color variation now to make it look more interesting. For this I use a slightly lighter dark yellow tone. In this case the dark yellow variant 3. I spray the paint in very thin layers on the horizontal surfaces. I mainly concentrate on the areas that will fade more quickly due to exposure to the sun. Now I can continue with the camouflage. In this case I will try to stick to the instructions in order to reproduce Ottokario's tank as well as possible. On top of the dark yellow base color, Tiger 217 has multiple green stripes. These are painted with AK's olive green. For me, it is easiest to apply the camouflage pattern with a brush. I can't work precisely enough with the airbrush yet, and in this case, masking is very time consuming. When painting with a brush, it is important to dilute the paint significantly. That way, brush strokes can be largely avoided. Although it will be difficult to recognize brush strokes here on the Zimmeret anyway. However, I don't want to cover up the texture with paint that is too thick. The instructions only show the pattern from the front, back, left and right. So I don't know if the tank had any camouflage patches on the roof. I will connect a few lines as it would make sense, but keep the green in those places to a minimum.
And this is the finished camouflage pattern. It doesn't look exactly like it does on the box art, but it is close enough for me. Next, I want to paint the damaged Zimmerit parts. Zimmerit paste was not so durable and therefore often fell off in contact areas or at the edges. In places where the Zimmerit has fallen off, the primer that was applied in the factory becomes visible. Here I had the choice between dark grey and oxide red. Since I couldn't find any historical references about the primers used on this tank, I decided on oxide red for a nicer contrast. For the oxide red I chose AK's brown red REL 8013. This step really shows the level of detail Tarcom included in their molding. I don't have to worry too much when applying some paint to the surrounding Zimmerit, as I can correct any mistakes in the coming steps. But a thin brush is still recommended here. Now is a good time to apply the included decals. First, the surface is prepared with Microset. Microset is a setting solution for decals and improves adhesion. Then I can put the prepared decals in place. The Balkenkreuz was the emblem of the Wehrmacht during the Second World War and is found on most German military vehicles. Once the decal is in place, I can apply a coat of Micro Sole with a brush. This liquid softens the decal and allows it to better adapt to the irregular surfaces such as Zimmerit. After a few minutes the chemicals have reacted and the now very soft decal can be firmly pressed onto the Zimmerit. Do not use too much force here or else you might risk tearing it apart. A cotton bud is a great tool for that. Once they had some time to set, I can begin with the chipping. First are the Zimmerat parts. Zimmerat is a light brown, almost white paste. Therefore the chips have to be done in a similar color. I chose AK's deck tan. First I carefully outline the red spots. To do this I use a very fine brush with slightly diluted paint. While the paint isn't dry yet, I use a little tap water to blend the white edges and create a softer finish. I can also use the paint as a wash and add a touch of white to all the red spots to simulate some leftover Zimmerit dust. In places where the wear is greater, for example on the lower glazes, I can also extend the white edge to the intact Zimmerit to simulate partially broken areas. With a fine brush, I can also paint the edges of some ridges, similar to dry brushing. And for the smallest chips, I use a sponge with a small amount of paint left over. I simply dab it carefully over the Zimmerat surfaces to create fine irregular details. This was the chipping for all the Zimmerit. The same kind of chipping needs to be done on the steel surfaces. In this case I mix my base color, dark yellow, with a few drops of white. Mm -hmm. 
sponge chipping creates lots of small and random patterns over the entire surface. In addition, it is really simple to highlight any edges or raise details with this method. But it only works well when there is almost no paint left on the sponge. If there is too much, it just leaves big, unrealistic spots. Every surface that does not have Zimmeret is covered like that. Even all the separate road wheels. The more wear a certain spot of the real tank has, the stronger the effect can be applied here. Areas where the crew stays or through which they enter the tank are a good start. All moving parts such as flaps, hinges or the engine covers should also be chipped. Now I have a bunch of tiny dots all over my tank. To create a bit more variation, I am combining some of them into bigger ones. It is done the same way as before. I combine the areas that are more worn or that come into contact with buildings, trees or similar things while driving into larger spots. I can also add some faint scratches here and there. This was only the first step for the steel chips. Next is to paint the actual exposed steel. In the past I used German grey for that, but this time I want to try out a dark rust tone. Now comes the time consuming part of painting every spot inside dark. It is important to leave the outer edge in the lighter yellow. This means that the darker chips not only have a higher contrast, but also creates a three dimensional effect. The rust looks really nice. It should be a bit more realistic than the dark grey, because the steel surfaces should start to rust when exposed to the elements. In the final step I will use the sponge again. As before I dab the entire surface. This means I don't have to use a brush for the tiniest of spots. And in addition it has the necessary randomness for a realistic result. I can also attach the spare tracks to the turret now. How about we finish with painting some tools. A nice base layer for steel tools is dark grey. In this case Revell Aquacolor Anthracite. Once the paint has dried, I take a lighter shade of grey and blend it into a very thin wash. I then apply this unevenly over the metal tools. Once dry, it will look like worn steel. The tow cables are all base painted with a medium grey for now.
I would also like to do some work on the exhaust system to make it look rusty and worn. I prepare them with a coat of medium grey. Then I stipple a few spots of light grey on top and some dark rust is added with a sponge. This won't be the final result, but the remaining effects here will be done with enamel effects later. Also 99% of what I'm doing here right now will be invisible later. And that should be it for the episode. The tiger is far from finished, but I wanted to give a little interim result, as there would otherwise be several months between episodes. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like the video and give me your feedback in the comments. If you don't want to miss any future uploads, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.